Shooter 2007. As the film commences, the scene unfolds with U.S. Special Forces sniper Bob Lee Swagger, Mark Wahlberg, and his scout, Donnie Finn, Lane Garrison, strategically positioned in the hills of Ethiopia. Their mission is to provide cover for a U.S. convoy navigating through hostile terrain on its way back to base. Engaged in casual conversation, Donnie reflects on a photograph of his wife, Sarah Kate Mara. Suddenly, a lone truck equipped with a mounted machine gun speeds toward the American convoy below. With precision, Swagger eliminates the shooter and driver with single shots to the head. The apparent success of the mission takes a turn when a hostile militia emerges, unleashing a barrage of gunfire on the soldiers. Donnie guides Swagger, who systematically eliminates numerous hostiles, ensuring the safe escape of the U.S. forces. However, protecting the convoy exposes the sniper's location, subjecting them to intense enemy fire. Back at base, their commanding officer prioritizes avoiding detection, leaving Swagger and Donnie abandoned and presumed dead. As an enemy helicopter attacks, Donnie loses his life. Frustrated, Swagger fires at the helicopter until he discovers a Barrett 50 caliber VBM 82A3 SASR. He retaliates, bringing down the helicopter in flames. The screen is engulfed in smoke as the helicopter crashes and explodes. Fast forward three years, and Swagger has become a secluded civilian living in the mountains, disconnected from the world that betrayed him. With an unkempt appearance and long hair, he resides alone, accompanied only by his dog, trained to fetch a cold beer from the fridge. While sharing a moment with his canine companion, Swagger powers up his PC and browses the internet, observing a world that leaves him disenchanted. Meanwhile, at a military office, wheelchair-bound Michael Sandor, Raid Sherbagia, Colonel Isaac Johnson, Danny Glover, Jack Payne, Elias Coteus, and Louis Dobler, Jonathan Walker, are strategizing an operation. Sandor suggests Swagger, viewing him as the ideal candidate for their covert needs, a once-heroic operative turned solitary figure. Johnson and his team venture into the woodland to enlist Swagger for their mission. Alerted by his barking dog, Swagger is alerted as the men approach his cabin. Johnson introduces himself to Swagger, flaunting his own Medal of Honor. Tension mounts as Swagger is not interested in talking, and when Payne tries to lure the dog to him, Swagger warns him off. Tension escalates as Payne reaches slowly down towards his gun and Swagger readies a hidden blade. Johnson calms the situation, convincing Swagger to give him five minutes. Payne and Dobbler wait outside as Johnson explains their presence. They have received information about a planned assassination attempt on the president and, with a mole in one of their agencies, they've turned for help to Swagger. One of their few intelligence clues is that the assassin's shot will be taken from over a mile, a shot which only a few men are capable of doing. Still Swagger wants nothing to do with the plan, but Johnson insists. The president will travel to three different cities, and Johnson wants Swagger to travel to each and scout potential places for a sniper. Feelings of patriotism, or perhaps habit begin to change Swagger's mind. Still, as Johnson prepares to leave, Swagger takes a picture of as he admires their truck's engine. As they drive back down the mountain, Swagger's professional suspicion is understood by Johnson and his men they know he didn't take a picture of the engine but of their license plate. But he's agreed to their plan. Memphis calls the FBI field office and talks to his superior officer, informing him that he has Swagger in custody. He talks long enough for them to trace the call. Swagger then calls Johnson, who tells him that he wants to meet. Johnson reveals that he has Sarah, and Swagger reveals that he recorded Sandor's confession about everything. Johnson agrees to meet, but wants to see him coming from a long way off. Swagger requests that Meacham be present. The meeting is in the snowy mountains where Johnson, Meacham, Payne, and Sarah are present. Payne rigged a shotgun to his hand and is holding Sarah at gunpoint. They see Swagger walking towards them in the distance, and he is immediately shot in the chest by a hidden sniper. Johnson and Meacham are pleased, but their hidden snipers are shot through the head one by one. Turns out Swagger was posing as a hidden sniper while Memphis was walking towards Johnson. Memphis pulls out his armor and continues to walk towards them. Swagger aims carefully and destroys Payne's shotgun while blowing off his thumb. Payne laughs in shock, and then Swagger blows off his arm. Memphis disarms Johnson and Meacham, and Swagger finally approaches them. Sarah grabs a pistol and shoots Payne to death. Meacham offers Swagger a job, but he refuses. Memphis calls in the FBI to come to their location, and Swagger burns Sandor's recording. Memphis tells him that it proves he's innocent, but Swagger knows that whoever turns over the recording is dead. No one there is innocent, and so they wait for the FBI to show up. 
Some time passes, and Swagger is brought to a meeting in the Department of Justice. Present are the Attorney General, Johnson, Memphis, and Sarah. Memphis shakes Swagger's hand and slips him unseen by others in the room. In front of him is his sniper rifle, and Swagger's hands are freed. He asks if the rifle has been tampered with by the FBI or any other authority, but it hasn't. He turns to Memphis, asking whether he believes in Swagger's innocence whether he trusts him with his life. Memphis answers yes, and Swagger loads a bullet into the rifle, aims at Memphis, and pulls the trigger to a resounding click, as nothing happens. The truth of the situation is clear. Before he left to scout locations, he removed the firing pins from all his weapons, including the rifle in front of him that was supposedly used in the shooting. It was impossible, then, that he had used his weapon to kill the Ethiopian Archbishop. Clearly innocent, Swagger and Memphis then argue that the real guilty parties in the room is Johnson, tying him to the mass grave in Ethiopia. But the Attorney General has no jurisdiction over crimes Johnson may or may not have committed in other countries. Johnson is allowed to leave, telling Swagger that he had one again. The Attorney General frees Swagger, convinced that he's innocent. He tells Swagger that sometimes justice isn't fair but we don't live in the Old West anymore where you can clean things up with a gun. They exchange knowing looks. Sometime later, Johnson celebrates his victory with Meacham and Dobbler in a remote cabin. Meacham and Johnson laugh about winning again, and Meacham plans to move Johnson out of the country to fix another problem they have. As Dobbler begins to explain his next mission, blood splatters on his face. A dead guard falls down directly in front of him. Johnson realizes that Swagger is there, but is shot through the chest. He dies very painfully. Dobbler turns off the lights, and Meacham orders him to get the car. Meacham's SUV explodes, and the men panic. Swagger moves underneath the cabin, and Dobbler tells the remaining bodyguard that Swagger is under the floor. Swagger shoots Dobbler through the knee from under the floor, and shoots the guard to death from below. He then enters the cabin, where Dobbler pleads with Swagger to spare his life since he didn't do anything. Swagger shoots Dobbler in the chest and approaches Meacham. I'm a senator. You can't do this, cries Dobbler as Swagger blows his brains out with a pistol before placing it in Johnson's hands. Swagger breaks the gas line of the cabin, and as Swagger leaves, the cabin explodes. The film ends with Swagger, Sarah behind the wheel, driving into the distance. I know.